Now to Intel, seeing a spike midday after hedge fund Third Point called for big changes at the company. Leslie Pickers got the story for us. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Wolf. Those changes include urging Intel to hire a banker to advise on strategic alternatives, including whether the company should remain an integrated device manufacturer and whether it needs to divest some of its assets. In a sharply worded letter obtained by CNBC, Third Point's Dan Loeb criticizes Intel's, quote, loss of manufacturing leadership as well as its lagging position among competitors. Editors, Loeb notes that Intel is at risk of losing customers as well as talent despite rewarding management with, quote, extravagant compensation packages. Notably, Third Point says that it is preserving the option to nominate directors to the board if Loeb senses a reluctance to work together to address his concerns. So quite a, a warning shot there. Now, the size of Third Point's stake in Intel is not disclosed in the letter nor in SEC filings just yet, but Reuters is reporting it's worth about a billion dollars, which is just about half a percentage point of Intel's market cap. In response, Intel says it, quote, welcomes input from all investors regarding enhanced shareholder value and goes on to say it looks forward to engaging with Third Point and their ideas towards that goal. Guys. So, so, Leslie, uh, about a billion dollars uh, based on the Reuters report in terms of size of the investment. Do we know about the timing when they got in? I mean, clearly Intel's been a significant underperformer, certainly relative to its own sector that's been very strong. Uh, whereabouts are our third point relative to profit or loss at this, this level? It's a good question. So we went back and checked their latest 13F filing, which is as of the end of the third quarter, so September 30th or so. Uh, it wasn't listed as a holding at that time. So perhaps somewhere between now uh, and or then and now, they were acquiring the stake. Now, third point is up over 12 percent in the year. So they are doing quite well, they've taken uh, you know somewhat of a tilt toward tech and media uh, in recent months and, and throughout the course of this year, and that of course has helped uh, them perform this year. But uh, certainly today's boost should be helping uh, with a gain of about five percent. Leslie, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of Dan Loeb's track record. The last one I, I covered that was close to when he started a fight was Campbell Soup. Campbell's. I knew you yeah. were going to say that. So, so he, tri <laughs> he, he tried to force a sale and tried to take the entire board slate and, and ran into trouble when the, when yep. some of the family were actually board members. I think they ultimately made a deal, but he did not get what he wanted. So what's the success rate at doing things like this, where he's where he's ultimately forcing a total rethink of the company's future? Yeah. No. It's funny you mentioned that because I went back and checked to see the last time he did run a full-on proxy fight and Campbell's was the last time, which was about two years ago. So they wound up settling that that fight. Um, and, and that's become a little bit more common with activists to go ahead and settle before it actually reaches a vote. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, he has about a 0.5% stake at that billion-dollar amount. He could potentially acquire more from there. He could be teaming up. We don't know, but this is also something that's common with other investors to try and, uh, you know, have more power in, in the uh, proxy fight if it comes down to that. Um, interesting, though, because oftentimes, and, and this was true with the Disney letter earlier this year, oftentimes we don't see this type of strong language in these letters. The fact that, you know, he's saying he's expecting reluctance right out of the gate and saying that if we sense that reluctance, we, we reserve the right to, to nominate directors to the board and try and institute some of these changes. So that is an interesting tone, and it'll be one to follow, I think, in 2021. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.